So do you think the studying of black holes and some of the topics we've been talking about will allow us to travel faster than the speed of light or travel close to the speed of light or do some kind of really innovative breakthroughs on the propulsion technology we use for traveling in space? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I assign in an advanced general relativity class the assignment of inventing a warp drive. Warp drive. <laughs> and it's kind of similar. So the idea is, uh, here's a place you want to get to. <laughs> and can you contract the space-time between you with some so the kind of some, something antithetical to dark energy, the opposite, and skip across and then push it back out again. <laughs> That's all, can, you can do that in the context of general relativity. Now, I, I can't find the energy that has these properties, but I also can't find dark energy. So, so we've already been confronted with something that we look at the space-time, the space-time is expanding ever faster. We say, what could possibly do that? We don't know what it is, but I can tell you about its pressure. I can tell you certain features about it. And I just call it dark energy, but I actually have no idea. It's just, that name's just a proxy for what this, it should be called invisible because it's not actually dark. If it's in this room, it's not hard to see through. It's not dark. It's, it's literally invisible. Um, so maybe that was a misnomer. But the point being, I still don't fundamentally know what it is. That's not so terrible. That's, that's the state of the world that we're actually in. So maybe warp drive is just kind of like a version of that. I, I don't know what form of matter can do that yet, but at least I can identify the features that are needed. So figuring out what dark energy is might land some clues. Yeah, it, actually it might. Um, it, it, is, it is positive energy um, um, and a negative pressure, which is kind of like a rubber band sort of quality. We think of pressure as pushing things outward and dark energy has a very strange sort of quality that as things move outward, you feel more energy as opposed to less energy. The energy doesn't get lower, it gets more. And um, but it so it doesn't have the right features for the wormhole, but those are some pretty surprising features. And we we again can conjecture like, oh hey, you know, the quantum energy of the vacuum kind of behaves that way. That would be a great resolution to the dark energy problem. It's just the energy of empty space. And it's the quantum energy of empty space. That's an excellent answer. The problem is, is by all our methods and all the understanding we have, that energy's either really, really huge, huge, um, way bigger than what we see today, or it's like zero. <laughs> so that's a numbers problem. We can't naturally fine tune the energy of empty space to give us this really weird value so that we just happen to be seeing it today. But Again, we can think of a kind of dark energy that exists. Um, so the question is just why is it, it becomes why is it such, such a weird value? Um, not how is this conceivable, because we can't conceive of it. Yeah, but if it's a weird value, that means there is a phenomenon we don't understand. Yes, right? there's absolutely a phenomenon. Nobody's going to say they're happy with that. We're yeah. all going to say there's something we don't understand, which is why we look to the extra dimensions, because then you can say, oh, maybe it has to do with the size of the extra dimensions or the way that they're wrapped up. or um, And so maybe there's, it's foisted on us because of the, the topology, the connectedness of the higher dimensional space. These are all things that we're exploring. Nobody's landed one that's so compelling that uh, your friends like it as much as you do. <laughs> <laughs> what, what what do you think would lead to the breakthroughs on dark matter and dark energy? I think dark matter might be uh, less peculiar um, than dark energy. My hope is that they're tied together. So that's that would be very gratifying. These aren't just separate problems coming from different sectors, but that they're actually connected. Um, that the reason the dark matter is where it is in terms of how much it's contributing to the universe is is connected with why the dark energy is showing up right now. I would love that. That would be a solution like no other, right? And and like I said, if it revealed something about dark dimensions, you know, that's that would be a happy day. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. So dark matter could be localized in space. Yeah. Dark matter is localized in space. So it clumps. I mean it doesn't it doesn't clump a lot, you know, but but I mean it's around the galaxy. It's in a halo around the galaxy. And so people get increasingly more confident that it, that's oh, a thing. Oh, it's really compelling. Yeah. I mean, you see um, these images of uh, galaxies that clusters that, that pass through each other. 
and you can see where the light is, the luminous matter is distributed. And then by looking at the gravitational lensing, which shows you where the actual mass is distributed so that light bends around the most massive parts in a particular way so you can reconstruct where the mass is gravitationally, quite separate from looking at the luminous matter, which is not dark, and they are separate because the stuff as they pass through each other, the interacting stuff, the luminous stuff collides and gets stuck and you can see it colliding and lighting up. The dark stuff which by definition it's dark because it doesn't interact, passes right through its right through each other, right? And this is, I mean, it's so compelling. And there's lots of other um, observations, but but that one is just before you just look at it, you can see that the mass is distributed differently than the interacting luminous matter. So uh, dark energy is harder to get a hold of. Dark energy is much harder to get a hold of. But, you know, I mean, the Higgs field could have also explained dark energy. Yeah. Um, if you've heard of the God particle. I don't know if you know the originally Leon Letterman co-authored a book and he wanted to call it the goddamn particle because I couldn't <laughs> find it. <laughs> and his, nice. his publisher convinced him to call it the God particle. Uh, and he said, he said they managed to offend two groups: those that believed in God and those that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line, too. Oh boy, he was very funny. Yeah. He was very witty. So you know, Higgs turned out to be Higgs' great discovery. I mean, yeah. unbelievable. Um, there it was. Build this massive collider yep. in CERN in Switzerland, and there it is. Unbelievable. Kind of where you expect it to be. Now, the reason I say it could be dark energy is because the Higgs particle, like a particle of light, also has a field, like an electromagnetic field. So light can have this field that's distributed through all space, electric magnetic field, and you shake it around and it creates little particles. So the Higgs field is actually more important than the Higgs particle, the complement to the Higgs particle, because that's what you and I connect with to get mass mm -hmm. in our atoms. So the idea is that our atoms are interacting with this gooey field that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what's giving us this experience of inertial mass. But we don't actually, inter there's not a lot of quanta lying around. There's not a lot of Higgs particles lying around because they decay. So it's the field that's really important. And that field could act like a dark energy. It's just not in the right place, meaning it's not at the right, the energy's too high mm -hmm. in, to explain this tiny, tiny value today. And again, we're back to this mismatch. It's not that we can't conceive of forms of dark energy. It's that we can't make one where, we, where we're finding it. <laughs>